Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to get Stable Diffusion running locally on Linux Ubuntu version 22.04. Before starting this tutorial, make sure that you have Git installed and a Hugging Face account. Also, if you want to use your GPU, make sure that you have the proper NVIDIA drivers installed and also CUDA. Now we are going to open a terminal, make a directory for the AI project, change into that directory, then do a git clone from HTTP from this repository. This will be the UI for the model. After that, we need the actual model. There's plenty of stable diffusion models that you can use. In this example, we're going to use stable diffusion version 1.4. So go onto the Hugging Face website and download the version 1.4 model here and put it in the models directory of the stable diffusion folder that you just cloned. While we wait for that to download, on GitHub there's a bunch of different command line arguments that you can feed into the bash script to get this running. Here is where you can find that information about all the arguments. You can change these arguments within the webui-user.sh file. In our case, we will be uncommenting line 13 and adding the argument for low VRAM. This argument makes it so that Stable Diffusion uses the lowest amount of VRAM possible while still having the model processing on the GPU. In fact, I'm able to get this working on a GPU that only has 4 gigabytes of VRAM, and I have no problems at all. If you don't have a GPU, make sure to set the argument for skip torch CUDA test, so that it doesn't try to use the GPU. Now to get a model running, open your terminal, change into the stable diffusion web UI directory, then run the shell script for webui.sh and let that script run. After it's done, you can go to the web UI by following the IP address specified. Now here's the UI. You can enter a prompt such as this one, and then we can add a negative prompt such as aliens, and then hit the generate button and it will generate our image. This UI provides a bunch of different options to help you make better images. This section is the prompt section. This is what you want to see. A good prompt needs to be detailed and specific. It could include information such as the subject, the style, the medium, the color, the lighting, pretty much anything. There's a lot of prompt generators online as well to help out. This section is the negative prompt. This is useful to tell the model what you do not want to see and refine text to image generation in stable diffusion models. They offer an additional way to guide the image generation process by specifying what elements should be avoided or minimized in the resulting image. Negative prompts are useful in several situations, such as removing specific elements from the generated image, making subtle changes to the subject, or modifying the image style. Stable Diffusion begins by creating a completely random image, followed by a series of denoising steps that gradually transform the image into a cleaner, more coherent form. These denoising steps are termed sampling, and the specific method employed during sampling is known as the sampling method. Numerous samplers are available, with different characteristics and trade-offs between speed and accuracy. The choice of the sampler determines the balance between the speed of the image generation and the accuracy of the final image. By exploring various samplers and their properties, users can optimize their desired outcomes for speed, quality, or a combination of both. This section is for the sampling steps. Stable Diffusion creates an image by starting with a canvas full of noise and denoising it gradually to reach the final output. This parameter controls the number of denoising steps. Usually a higher number is better, but to a certain degree. The default we use is 25 steps, which should be good enough for generating any kind of image. But depending upon the use case, I may use as few as 10 steps. This is the Restore Faces option. This option fixes the face and the eyes. This is the Tiling option. Use the tiling option to produce a periodic image that can be tiled. This is the high resolution fix option. This option applies an upscaler to scale up your image. You need this because the native resolution of stable diffusion is 512 pixels by 512 pixels, or 768 pixels for certain V2 models. This image is too small for many usages. You might be wondering why you can't just set the width and height to be larger, like 1024 pixels. The reason is because deviating from the native resolution would affect compositions and create problems for generating images such as having two heads. So the best practice is to first generate a small image of 512 pixels on either side, then scale it up to a bigger one. These are the image output width and height. You should set at least one side to 512 pixels for the V1 models. 
For example, set the width to 512 and the height to 768 for a portrait image with a 2 to 3 aspect ratio. Set at least one side to 768 when using the V2 768 pixel model. This is the CFG scale parameter. This stands for Classifier Free Guidance Scale, and it's a parameter to control how much the model should respect your prompt. A score of 1 means to pretty much ignore the prompt, and a score of 30 is to strictly follow the prompt. You don't want to set the values too high or too low. Stable Diffusion will ignore your prompt if the value is too low, and the color of the images will be saturated if it's too high. This is the batch count. This is the number of times you run the image generation pipeline. This is the batch size, which is the number of images to generate each time you run the pipeline. The total number of images generated equals the batch count times the batch size. You can change the batch size if you want it to generate multiple images faster, but if you're running into memory issues, you can always reduce the batch count. This is the section to set a seed. In Stable Diffusion, the seed value is used to generate a noise image. This is subsequently denoised to resemble the visual information related to the provided prompt. The same seed, prompt, and settings combination will consistently produce the same final image. As a user, you can choose to leave the seed unspecified, in which case a random seed value will be assigned. This is really nice if you want to fix the content of an image and tweak the prompt. The dice icon is used to set the seed back to negative 1, which means random. The recycle button is used to copy the seed value to the seed value input box. This is important if you set the seed to negative 1, which means random, but you want to use that seed. So then you can just hit this button so that you can keep that seed and do your modifications of that image. And there you have it. That's a quick and easy guide to getting the Stable Diffusion model working locally on Linux Ubuntu. Let me know if you have any other questions in the comments.